Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today let's talk about acne. I found this book that I wanted to share with you guys. This is The Doctor's Secret to a Lifetime of Clear Skin and it's written by two dermatologists. It's Katie Roden and Kathy Fields. So for those of you who don't know me very well, um, I have very acne prone skin. And even at this age where I'm in my 30s, I still get acne. I've been doing a lot of research to find out, you know, what's causing my acne, how can I prevent it, and just overall finding the best uh, skincare out there to help me prevent acne. A lot of the research that I've done comes from this book, and I just overall wanted to share it with you and um, tell you guys what I've learned. <laughs> Just to get to know my skin type, I have oily to combination skin. And that means I have oily here in the T-zone area, so in my forehead, on my nose most especially, right here on the sides of my nose, and then on my chin. So depending on the season, you know, I have combination skin. Sometimes I do get dry, but that's very rare and maybe just a few days in the winter time. A lot of times I keep thinking, you know, what's going on? What am I doing wrong? What's wrong with my skincare routine? Or what am I eating that's wrong? 99% of the time, acne is hereditary and it's also caused by stress. For me, I believe that um, part of it is hereditary but also part of it is, and I think a bigger part of it is stress. When I have a lot of things on my plate, you'll see that I have a lot of acne. My acne type are the cystic acne. Those are the acne that lives deep under the skin. It's not something that you can pop and it stays under, under the skin for a very, very long time. So what I learned is that when you stress, we release this hormone called cortisol. The acne really feeds off of this hormone. So try not to get stressed out. Now, will cutting sweets make a difference? Um, yes, it can, but it's on a case-to-case -case basis. So a lot of the cause of acne is because of hereditary and hormones. A food is very specific to each person. We hear a lot about how milk and chocolate, dairy, you know, can cause a lot of acne on some folks, but maybe it's not gonna cause a lot of acne for other folks. So it really is dependent on the person. So it's important that, you know, if you notice that you're breaking out a lot, you might wanna check to see what is in your diet. Eating a lot of milk and dairy and meats contains hormones that are not good for the skin, and also high glycemic foods such as, um, just any kind of junk food that you could think of. So the next thing that we need to learn about uh, acne is that we need to stop popping our zits. That's easier said than done. When you notice your acne is getting ripe and we all know what that means, you know, you so wanna pop that, that zit, but we really have to refrain. In my case, it's just a big bump in the face that you can't really do anything about. When we pop, it drives the, the bacteria deeper into our skin, but also it spreads the bacteria around. And I've noticed that myself. I try to pop one zit, and then all of a sudden the next day, I get another one right next to it. And that's because you spread the germs across your face. So by not popping zits, you're gonna reduce the scarring and you're gonna prevent the acne from getting worse. When you feel like popping that zit, you wanna go ahead and uh, get an ice cube, apply it on the inflamed area so that it can calm down a bit, and then apply your acne medication. There are different types of medication for different types of acne. Um, my cystic acne responds very well to benzoyl peroxide. So a good example is the proactive emergency blemish relief. And it looks like that. When you're on a budget, a good drugstore brand is the Clearasil. And they both have benzoyl peroxide. So the Clearasil has about 10% benzoyl peroxide and the proactive one has a 5% benzoyl peroxide treatment. Clearasil is actually has a higher dose of benzoyl peroxide for those really pesty 
at me <laughs> that you get. So both of them are great. I've tried them both and I noticed good results. Another type of acne medicine is, is one that contains sulfur. Sulfur is a very fast acting acne medication. And one acne medication that I know contains sulfur is the Mario Badescu drying lotion. It's very good, you can find it at Ulta. I haven't personally tried it myself, but I know it has that active ingredient. So I'd actually like to try that one to see if it's actually better than benzoyl peroxide. And then of course, one of the most common um, acne medications out there are the ones that contain salicylic acid. And salicylic acid is good at removing or unclogging those clogged pores. The Super Spot Remover from Origins, and it's in this teeny tiny bottle, but I love it. It contains salicylic acid, but at the same time, you know, it helps in removing those dark spots um, or scarring from the acne. Another thing that I learned, which to me is new, is that zit is really the finale. Okay, so when you finally have a sit, the battle has started or it's actually been won by acne. When you're using spot treatments to clear up your acne, it's kind of a little bit too late. Your battle with acne has to be continuous. And then the oiliness from our skin keeps all of that dead skin cell in the pores, which is actually food for acne. So. We need to remember to keep up with our acne routine. So this means that you don't just apply acne medication when you already have the zit coming out of your face. You want to apply the acne medication before the battle begins. When you don't have acne, you need to always wash your face every day. Apply a low grade um, acne medication, something that you can use on a day to day basis. Now these, um, two spot treatments that I mentioned have about 5% benzoyl peroxide in them and so they might be a little too strong to apply on a day-to-day -day. you want to find something that is low grade according to the doctors here 2.5% of benzoyl peroxide is a good dose to use on a day-to-day -day basis even when you don't have acne and you know i haven't had acne in about six weeks now i knew that the bulk of my acne comes out of my chin and so i've been applying my acne medication on my chin to kind of prevent the acne from happening in the first place also because of all the shedding that we do it's important to use an exfoliator but some of the um, products that i've tried is the dr brand age defying exfoliator which is really a heavy duty exfoliator for the skin another one is the biore pore unclogging uh, scrub or neutrogena clean and gentle exfoliator anything that has um, some kind of exfoliating beads in your cleanser are going to be good to you know prevent acne from happening in the first place okay the next thing that you should know about acne is in the products that you use the technical term for blackheads and whiteheads is comedo and so when you are using products make sure you look for products that has the term non-acnegenic non-comedogenic or um, oil free all of those things are good products for your skin that's not going to clog your pores that's really going to help your pores breathe when you do use makeup try to find makeup products that says oil free non-comedogenic acne free in their packaging in my skincare my moisturizer says oil free non-comedogenic um, my primer my cover effects primer i love this primer and so this is actually a mattifying primer with anti-acne treatment so the active ingredient is a one percent salicylic acid so this is really good. It's kind of a pore filling act, um, primer, but also mattifying. So it prevents the oils from peeking through when I do wear makeup. Any type of makeup product that you use, make sure it says oil-free or non-comedogenic. I don't know if you guys have heard about using acids. It's kind of scary. It's like, why should I use acids on my face, right? So with acids, there's the glycolic acid and there's also the salicylic acid. Both of those are good to use on a regular basis. Glycolic acid is, I believe, is a little bit stronger. And so 
Me personally, I've just started using acids um, and, and really looking into that, but so far so good. I really like it. The one that I've tried is by Pixie and Pixie, it can be found at Target now and um, it is the Pixie Glow Tonic. It's a kind of toner that I use after I wash my face um, and cleanse. The toners really kind of balance out the pH levels of your skin, which allows the skin to absorb all the serums, all the acne medications that you're gonna put. Next up, let's talk about back knee, butt knee, and dandruff. <laughs> or scalp knee. Um, so the only thing that we need to know about is that whether it's acne, back knee, butt knee, they're all acne and whatever you use on your face, they are just as effective on anywhere else in your body. So don't be afraid to use um, those acne medications that you have on other parts of your body when you do get acne. Some of the things that I recommend is, at least for the scalp, because this has been a growing issue with my son because he's already going through puberty um, is scalp knee. So head and shoulders is good for dandruff and also any kind of shampoo or medicated shampoo that has salicylic acid. And one of them is by Neutrogena and I'll find that and display it here on the screen. Neutrogena T-Cell shampoo is another good one that you can try. One misconception about acne and having oily skin is that we should stop using moisturizers. We should wash our face often. Washing your face often could actually dry out your face and then send a signal to your system, to your body saying, you know what, I don't have enough oils, I'm gonna produce more oil. It's actually working against you. So you want to just wash twice a day is enough. So here's an interesting fact, the sun is acne's best friend <laughs> so what do you do you have to use sunscreen every single day whether it's winter time whether it's raining whether it's cold outside sunny outside always use sunscreen now the type of sunscreen that you should use are the ones that are oil free again non-comedogenic non-acnegenic type of sunscreen also you want to get uh, the sunscreen that says broad spectrum sunscreen because these are the ones that are actually going to block both types of rays, rays which is the UVA or UVB rays. Um, sunscreens that contain zinc oxide, avobenzone, or mexoril. If you can find sunscreen that have one of those ingredients as an active ingredient on the list, then those are going to be the ones that are good for you. So. Two things that I've been using, my son is in the swim team. I use these two a lot on him. They both say broad spectrum SPF 70, which is by Neutrogena. And again, another one is the Neutrogena Beach Defense Water and Sun Protection. Again, it says broad spectrum SPF 70. I tend to use this for the body and it says oil free. It's not going to clog your pores and the active ingredient here is avobenzone, which is one of the recommended ingredients by the two doctors here. So some people do get more acne when they use sunscreen. So find one that is oil free and always remember to apply on a daily basis. So the last point that I really want to make is that acne is everywhere. It's not going to stop it's um, not curable, um, but it is controllable. And those are the quotes from the two doctors. And so what does that mean to you? We can't really outgrow acne. You know, there's gonna be cycles in our lives that time of the month or when we're extremely stressed and we have problems and issues, you know, you're gonna get acne, it's really unavoidable. Also, you can be a teenager and you can be an adult like me and still get acne. And so, what we have to remember is to just have a really good skincare routine and continue using it. You know, don't slack off on the skincare and find the right ingredients and the right products that's gonna work for your own skin type. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video or learned something, please hit the like button below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you back in my corner soon, bye.